do. The nail that sticks up gets pounded. The man in the lead had only taken a few steps, when he was unexpectedly pierced by a flurry of swords. He was shot like a hedgehog. Everyone was shocked and terrified. Some people still didn't believe it, and nearly ended up implicating themselves. The leader examined the swords on the corpse, but couldn't find any trace of the enemy. The leader understood that it might be the displeasure of the gods, so he began to consider retreat. However, there was not a trace of wind here, let alone setting sail. In order to seek the help of the gods, the leader led his people to carve wooden idols of the gods and used a heated dagger to blind each person's eyes and even resorted to having his subordinates kill each other. Finally, the gods were moved by their faith and sent them a life-saving strong wind. Centuries have passed by. Science and technology ruled the world. More and more people gradually forgot about the ancient gods. As the chief god and father of the gods, Odin couldn't let this situation continue. So, he planned to unite his old god companions to change the situation. The first helper he wanted to find was Jack, who was serving time in prison. Jack had only five days left until he could reunite with his wife, Laura. At night, Jack had a dream where he saw his wife's face through the ceiling. Before long, he found himself in a forest, where the ground was covered with skeletons, yet the sky above was exceptionally brilliant and beautiful. Jack was feeling confused. Suddenly, the branches around him seemed to come to life, and one of them cut his face. Jack woke up from the dream, and shortly after, a prison guard came to inform him that he needed to meet the warden. What surprised Jack was, that while he dreamt of his wife last night, his wife Laura had passed away in a car accident at the hospital. The warden approved his early release, allowing Jack to prepare for his wife's funeral. Jack was not only grief-stricken, but also deeply moved. The wife he met in his dream yesterday had passed away overnight, and he didn't even have a chance to see her one last time. Jack couldn't hide his sadness. After bidding farewell to the warden, he left the place where he had spent three years. Soon, he hurriedly arrived at the airport and boarded the plane back home. An old man approached him to start a conversation. The old man introduced himself as Dalton. He seemed to know a lot about Jack. Dalton wanted Jack to be his assistant. But Jack wasn't in the mood to look for work right now. He wanted to go home and bury his wife first. To avoid Dalton's pestering, he put on an eye mask to sleep. In a daze, he found himself once again in that strange forest from the previous night. Unlike last time, a yak with flames flowing from its eyes appeared here. At that moment, the flight attendant woke up Jack. Due to bad weather, the plane landed at a different airport. Jack spent all his cash to buy a used car and rushed home. After a period of rushing around, Jack went to a bar to relax, only to find the old man from the plane was also there. In fact, Dalton was the embodiment of Odin. Odin took out a newspaper, which showed that in the car accident that caused Jack's wife's death. There was another casualty, and it was Jack's old friend Robbie. Jack felt very sad, but he didn't discover any clues. Seeing Dalton's persistence, Jack stated he didn't want to work for an unlucky person, so he took out a coin, inviting Dalton for a bet. If Dalton won, Jack would work for him. Jack intended to intentionally toss the coin to the reverse side, but he didn't expect that he was facing the chief god Odin. Odin effortlessly turned the coin to the head side. However, Jack was still very puzzled. At that moment, a tall and thin person approached him. The person claimed to be Dalton's henchman, a dwarf. He immediately started performing his magic tricks. Coins were produced from any part of his body, which made Jack find it unbelievable. Bilquis said, if you want to know why, let's settle it with violence. Jack didn't have a chance to vent his frustrations, so he threw a punch, and they engaged in a fight. Jack was not weak against Odin's henchmen. Within 10 rounds, he had the upper hand over his opponent. Shortly after, Jack attended his wife's funeral, but he learned a secret. It turned out that the cause of his wife Laura's death was due to engaging in intimate activities with Robbie in the car. Jack didn't know what to say for a moment, but since both of them had already paid the price, he couldn't say much more. Before leaving, Jack placed a gold coin on the soil of his wife's grave, which he obtained as a reward from battling Bilquis. He bid farewell to his wife with a final sense of ceremony. However, as soon as Jack walked away, the coin suddenly sank into the soil. While Jack was walking back, he suddenly noticed a box. He simply poked the box with a stick, and the box transformed into a mask. 
flying onto Jack's face, a very strange scene, presented before Jack's eyes, shortly after, he felt as if he had been transported to another place, and two faceless men appeared beside him, a young man suddenly appeared in front of him, the young man introduced himself as Parker, one of the new gods, technical boy, he captured Jack, to find out about Odin's movements and plans, who knows that Jack hadn't even read the job description, so how could he know about them, at this point, Parker also realized, that Jack knew nothing, so he ordered the faceless men to surround Jack, then Parker said, he wouldn't kill Jack, instead, he would use his abilities, to completely erase Jack from the world, just like an application, with just a flick of his finger, after that, Parker touched a button in front of him, and the faceless men and Jack, were transported back to the real world, before Jack could react, he was punched and kicked by bystanders, but they were not satisfied with that, so they found a rope, and hung Jack in the air, at a critical moment, the rope was suddenly severed, and the faceless men were instantly shattered, by an incredibly fast force, when Jack woke up, only he remained in that place, Jack did some simple bandaging for himself, and he went to Odin to report the incident, after all, he had just started his job, he was almost killed by his enemies, after Odin heard about the incident, he was also very angry, such behavior was a humiliation to him, after comforting Jack, Odin reaffirmed his firm stance, determined to teach the other party a lesson, the next morning, the two of them went to Chicago, beginning their journey, to find old god allies for assistance, Odin planned to retrieve his weapon, Mjolnir, the hammer of Thor, Odin then instructed Jack, to buy something as a gift, when Jack arrived at the supermarket, a woman on the television, suddenly started speaking to him, which truly scared Jack, pulling the plug didn't help either, the woman seemed to, be able to move freely within the display screen, regarding this, the woman claimed to be the goddess of media, one of the new gods, she apologized for Parker's actions, and invited Jack to join her camp, offering many generous terms, unexpectedly, Jack had loyalty and righteousness, and after last night's horrific experience, Jack couldn't accept it, he then left without looking back, shortly after, Odin and Jack, with their gifts, knocked on the door of the goddess of enlightenment, the latter didn't seem very welcoming to the two of them, considering her past relationship with Odin, she decided to have dinner with them, an old man walked out, he was the person Odin was looking for on this trip, the old god, Seneberg, Berg was once the strongest deity under Odin, but they had a serious disagreement, seeing his old brother, Berg grabbed a desk lamp, and threw it at Odin, yet, the goddess of enlightenment intervened, and Berg had to stop, he accepted the gifts they brought, Odin explained the purpose of their visit, but unexpectedly, Berg was no longer the same as before, and was uninterested in the conflict, between the new and old gods, after dinner, Berg took out a worn out hammer, which was once his proudest weapon, the hammer of darkness, then, Berg invited Jack to play a game of chess with him, stating that if Jack won the game, he would agree to follow Odin into battle, but if Jack lost, Jack would have to give his own life, to nourish the hungry hammer of darkness, after several rounds, Jack felt that Berg's chess skills were terrifying, as he constantly applied pressure on his opponents, even without giving the opponent a chance to breathe, just like the attacks of the hammer of darkness, before long, Jack was defeated on the battlefield, a man tore off a black cloth, revealing a scale, that could weigh the sins of departed souls, he placed a feather, on one side of the scale, then he reached into the woman's body, and took out a heart, if the weight of the heart, was greater than the weight of the feather, the woman's soul would suffer torment and pain in hell, the scale swayed a few times, but eventually returned to balance, indicating that the woman had been charitable and virtuous in life, with almost no evil thoughts, the man smiled contentedly, then he led the woman to the five doors, behind each door is a road leading to the underworld, yet each leading to a completely different world, the woman expressed her desire for the man, to make the choice for her, upon hearing this, he slowly raised his right hand, and one stone door opened, after the woman left, the grim reaper received another soul that came here, and it was Laura, according to the rules, the grim reaper brought her to the scale, to measure Laura's sins in life with a feather, but just as he was about to extract Laura's heart, Laura refused this action, she stated, she had done many good and bad things in her life, in her own opinion, her heart would definitely be heavier than the feather, as soon as she finished speaking, she reached out, and pressed down on the end without the feather, her action angered the grim reaper, as the scale now had an answer, and the grim reaper couldn't say anything, he prepared to send Laura to hell, she suddenly regretted her decision, believing that she didn't accept the outcome, and wanted the grim reaper to send her, back to the original world, 
the Grim Reaper was very angry and began to criticize and educate her, silencing Laura completely. Just as Laura was about to speak, she was suddenly sucked up into the sky by a force of suction and then disappeared. The Grim Reaper was surprised by everything that had just happened. He had never seen a soul that came here and able to return to the mortal world again. Meanwhile, Laura's soul had returned to Laura's body. She reached out and passed through the soil, then climbed out from it. Although she didn't know what was happening, finding Jack was the priority. In her memory, Jack should have been released from prison. On the way back home, Laura noticed Jack was hanging upside down from a tree by a group of faceless men. Without much time to think, Laura rushed forward. She pierced the chest of one of the faceless men. She was also amazed at her own strength. After tearing apart the ropes, not long after, she tore apart all the faceless men, leaving a scene of bloodshed. Laura didn't wait for Jack to wake up, because she didn't want Jack to see her in this state. The next morning, Laura clenched her broken arm and went to her friend Audrey's house. Audrey was terrified. She believed that the Laura in front of her was not her former close friend, but a flesh-eating zombie. After Laura explained and reassured her, Audrey finally let go of her guard, and the situation finally calmed down. After understanding what had happened, Audrey fetched some needles and thread, and helped Laura sew her broken arm back together. Then they went to look for Jack, but what they didn't expect was, while they were halfway there, they were intercepted by the Grim Reaper and his assistant. They took Laura to a funeral home, the Grim Reaper said, although he didn't understand why this happened. Since it was the case, he could only let Laura stay here temporarily, to fulfill unfinished matters, and even help Laura stitch her severed arm back together, making it look more natural. After the Grim Reaper left, Laura found a place to temporarily stay, and just then, a Bilquis burst through the door. He grabbed Laura's neck, forcing her to open her mouth. As he suspected, the coins he lost to Jack were in Laura's throat, but with a gentle snap of her fingers, Bilquis was sent flying and crashed into the wall. This coin, possesses unimaginable magic, not only revived Laura from death, but also granted her astonishing divine power. Defeating five Bilquis was a piece of cake. Realizing that Laura wasn't someone to mess with, Bilquis decided to try a trick, and immediately conjured up a pile of identical coins. He said he was willing to exchange them with Laura, but he underestimated Laura. Laura saw that they were merely made of iron, unlike the one inside her body, and they cannot be compared. With the scheme exposed, Bilquis started cursing. He pushed Laura into a bathtub filled with water. He didn't expect that. Two police officers suddenly walked in and arrested him. Clearly, they treated him as a murderer. Meanwhile, Laura was quite happy in the bathtub. Jack and Odin were also arrested and taken to the police station as they were reported for bank robbery. When the two saw the surveillance photos, they were dumbfounded. Suddenly, the media goddess Lucy arrived here. Mr. World, the leader of the new gods, followed closely behind. He greeted Odin, and then noticed Jack sitting nearby. He knew Jack well, even everything in the world. He was well aware of it. To make a good impression on Jack, he specifically brought Parker over, and personally taught Parker a lesson, and made him apologize to Jack. Afterward, Mr. World explained his intentions. He didn't want to fight Odin, as battles among gods were extremely brutal. A large number of humans would become victims. Mr. World stated, if Odin was willing to surrender to them, he would use various means to allow Odin to reclaim his position as the chief god. He even promised to specially establish a satellite missile system named after Odin. Even though these conditions were tempting, Odin remained unmoved, as he wouldn't betray his former comrades, let alone join the new gods. Mr. World realized he couldn't persuade Odin, so he intended to leave the police station. But Parker stopped him. Parker asked why they didn't kill Odin. Since Odin was right there, wouldn't everything be over then? Mr. World explained Odin's power to Parker as the primordial god of war, the ruler of all gods. Odin possessed unrivaled power and divine authority. It would be a fool's dream to easily kill him. To calm Parker down, the media goddess knocked out two of Parker's front teeth. Before leaving, Mr. World turned to Jack and said, they weren't Jack's enemies. Before Jack had a chance to react, Odin grabbed him to leave this place. While they were stunned as soon as they stepped outside, the police station was filled with dead bodies, clearly recently deceased. Based on the marks and characteristics on the bodies, it seemed they were attacked by some kind of creature. Almost all of them died instantly within moments. They didn't waste any more time, choosing to flee towards the exit. In the corridor, suddenly, a moving plant appeared and entangled Jack's body. Jack quickly came up with a plan. He broke off branches from his body 
allowing him to escape. In a weapons manufacturing plant, the factory manager greeted his colleagues, but the railing beside him unexpectedly broke, and below him was a large furnace. The man's body quickly melted, becoming raw material for bullet production. This was Vulcan, the god of firearms, guarding a small village, where everyone had their own firearms. Vulcan educated them, that firearms were the most trustworthy objects. Vulcan was leading the villagers, to hold a funeral for the deceased factory manager. The production of firearms was filled with danger. The town's residents were already accustomed to such matters. Vulcan gave the order, and all the villagers fired their guns into the air, as a tribute to the deceased. Odin and Jack also arrived at this small town, just in time for the manager's funeral. Odin kindly advised Jack, suggesting that he should wait in the car for a while, although Jack had some doubts. He obediently followed the instruction. Odin approached, and greeted Vulcan. Meanwhile, the discharged bullets had reached their highest point. Before long, they landed on Jack's car. Jack also understood Odin's intention, but Odin and Vulcan were unharmed. Vulcan led the two of them inside the house, where firearms and heavy weapons were everywhere. Vulcan's revolver at his waist had bullets engraved with the names of the deceased. Every time he fired, it meant a sacrifice for himself. Odin didn't say much. After explaining his purpose, he hoped Vulcan would help him make a divine sword that can cut everything apart. Vulcan agreed, but Jack noticed something strange. The rope on the withered tree in the yard was the same as the one used by Mr. World. This reminded Jack of the technical boy, Parker. Odin reassured him not to panic. He still had trust in Vulcan. After being tempered with 81 strikes, Odin's god-slaying sword was finally crafted. Vulcan said, although the sword was incredibly sharp, he still preferred modern firearms. Odin asked Vulcan if he was collaborating with the new gods. Vulcan didn't deny it. Jack guessed correctly. Vulcan had made a deal with the new gods. Everything now is given by the new gods. Vulcan expressed his opinion. The old gods are aging, while the times keep changing. People's reverence for the old gods continuously diminishes, and reliance on the new gods keeps growing. Before he could finish, Odin slit Vulcan's throat, and then, he kicked him into the molten iron, revealing Odin's true nature as the Allfather. He wouldn't allow the existence of gods who betray him to deny Vulcan a chance for redemption. Odin cursed him in the molten iron. Afterward, they left to gather strength and fight against the new gods. Odin and Jack arrived at the mansion of the goddess of dawn, as they coincidentally arrived during Easter. The goddess of dawn, Ostara, had invited many deities to enjoy the festivities of the holiday. Ostara was greatly surprised by Odin's presence, as they hadn't interacted in centuries. Odin took out the god-slaying sword crafted by Vulcan, and Odin stated, the god of firearms has been killed by the new gods. Jack didn't expect that Odin would lie. Ostara clearly didn't know about it, and she believed Odin's words wholeheartedly. She had planned to retire and no longer interfere in god-related matters, but Odin's words touched her. Dilquis and Laura also arrived at the party scene. Ostara, the goddess of dawn, is the origin of all things and governs all life in the world. Dilquis wanted her to resurrect Laura, as he could retrieve the gold coins from Laura's body. After examining Laura's condition, Ostara shook her head, stating that Laura's death wasn't caused by the car accident, but rather the work of a deity. Laura became furious and immediately interrogated Dilquis. Dilquis revealed the truth, as it turned out, from Jack being imprisoned to Laura's fatal accident. It was all Odin's doing, all to convince Jack to work for the old gods. At that moment, the new gods arrived with Mr. World. They also wanted to recruit Ostara, but they didn't expect that Odin had arrived first. The new gods were furious and instructed the faceless men to surround Ostara. At this moment, Odin emerged from the house. He saw that the new gods were only capable of using petty tricks, yet dared to show off here. He despised the new gods. Mr. World arrived. He tried to advise Odin kindly, stating that everything he had done was in vain, and that the conflict would ultimately end in victory for the new gods. In the face of Mr. World's threats, Odin, of course, didn't take it seriously, but remained focused and composed. In an instant, the sky above the mansion became shrouded in dark clouds, followed by a loud thunderclap. A massive lightning bolt struck down all the faceless men. This terrifying power instilled fear in all the new gods. Odin's anger was just the beginning, as he transformed into his true form. Ostara also started unleashing her divine powers. She slowly raised her hands, and her domain expanded outward from her center. All the plants withered away. Even the newly sprouted seedlings retreated into the soil. In no time, all the plants within several kilometers died. Mr. World immediately departed. 
The Plot of American Gods Season 1 comes to an end here. The series premiered in 2017 and is a suspenseful fantasy series directed by David Slade. The series tells the story, set against the backdrop of rapid modern civilization development, where ancient deities are forgotten by people, while the new gods, represented by technology and media, rise to power. The new gods aim to replace the old gods, while Odin travels around in search of his old companions, thus engaging in a battle against the new gods. This is a worth-watching suspenseful fantasy masterpiece.